Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're back in the garage today. We're doing some exciting bits and pieces to the bike, as you can probably see. Uh, yeah, this is not how you normally see my bike. It's in bits, but there is a, some logic behind it. There is some reason. Um, we're going to do some performance upgrades to the bike. I'm going to do it over uh, two videos, but this is part one and part two. Uh, for part one, I've suddenly I've bought this. It's from Kent Cams. It's a camshaft, uh, performance camshaft upgrade to this bike. So we'll be taking out the uh, standard camshaft and replacing it with this one, the new one from Hitchcock's. Uh, and with the various uh, modifications that I'll be doing, potentially I should raise the power output from this bike by quite a bit. Um, and this, this is proven. You can do a lot of upgrades on bikes. You can do wee bits of changes that change the exhaust, change the, uh, the air filter and bits and pieces. And you go and ride the bike and you don't really know if that has really improved the performance. Um, there could be a placebo effect because you've spent all this money you want to convince yourself that it's actually been money well spent. Um, but for this modifications I'm making to this bike that's been proven by Hitchcock's on Hitchcock's dyno machine. They have taken a standard bike, which basically this engine is at this state point in time, and they've fitted various items, which I will do in the, between the, the two videos. And the power up has changed on the, from the standard model, on proven on Hitchcock's dyno, uh, the power, maximum power was 15.57 horsepower at the rear wheel. I know that normally you get a 20 horsepower uh, figure for this bike, but that's potentially at the crankshaft at the engines, not at the back wheel. So there is losses in the drive train. <clears throat> so the standard bike on the Hitchcock's dyno was 15.57 horsepower maximum power. With the upgrades, it increased to 20.46. That's a, a pretty hefty jump. Uh, yeah, it's about five horsepower, which is about 20, well, over 20% 20 or so more. And the power curve that it goes up, you can see it rising. Uh, I'll put a wee graphic up here of the, the dyno jet. <clears throat> but you can see in the lower end of the, the low RPM range, it's pretty much the same. But as the revs start to build, you can see the, it's much, much, much power at the top end. So the bike should perform really well, I think. And it should be able to hit its maximum speed much more easily. It should be able to have a lot more power at the top end, and which would be nice for, even just for potentially the bit of overtaking and things that you do, and just to be able to get a wee bit more punch from the engine. Um, so anyway, that's what we'll be doing today. First stage is, is we're going to fit the new camshaft to the engine. We remove this we cover at the side there so we can get access to the crankshaft to rotate the crankshaft. We've removed the cam cover so we can get access to the cams. We've removed this whole t casing here uh, so we can get in to lock the crankshaft in position so we can make sure we get the cam timing absolutely perfect. Yeah. It looks, it looks worse than it really is. <laughs> we have a, a couple of special tools that we've, I've actually got as well to use. Uh, the first one is this one here, which is a crankshaft locking tool, which goes in down the bottom here, which will lock the crankshaft in position. And the second one is the locking tool that goes in the top there to lock the, the camshaft in position as well, so we can get the valve timing absolutely spot on. Uh, the last thing you want to do in a, with a job like this is to 
remove the cam and have the, even having the cam just one tooth out, it would make such a difference to it and the bike just would not run well. These two tools will guarantee the valve timing is perfect. We'll go ahead and we'll make a start to fitting the camshaft. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate the crankshaft to bring the cam up to the correct position for top dead center. Uh, and you always do it by turning the crank in the anti-clockwise direction. When you see the cam, there's a small one section of the cam has got a, a wee hole in the top where the locking tool basically goes in, which is sitting in the top here. Um, and at this point, I'll put the, the locking tool in here, and if I continue turning the, the, the crankshaft anti-clockwise, it's almost at the point where the, the piston should be at top dead center, and you should hear or see the tool going in. That's it, I felt it going in. So now the crankshaft is locked, and as you can see, the crank will not turn anymore. So that's the, the crankshaft locked in the top dead center position. The next job is to fit the cam positioning tool to ensure that the cam timing is spot on. So that tool fits in and this relocating pin goes in and it should line up and lock in with the, the hole in the camshaft and that is perfect. So the camshaft is now locked, the crankshaft is locked. The, the valve timing on this bike is perfect. And that's the way we want it to stay. The next job we want to do is to basically remove two of the screws on the camshaft that hold the, cam, the camshaft sprocket on there. So we'll, at the moment we'll remove these tools. We've proven that this is correct. So we'll remove the special tools and we'll also remove the crankshaft holding tool for this. Because what we want to do is we do want to remove uh, these, but we but we want to remove this one last because I always want this one to be back at the top dead center position. So again, we'll rotate the piston, uh, the crankshaft, sorry, until we get this screw up and we want to remove that screw. And it's an eight millimeter socket to take this one off. So basically, let's, so we'll take this bolt out and always be very very careful because the last thing you want to do is to drop anything down into that void so be incredibly careful at this point if you do this job so that's one screw out rotate the crank a bit more to get to bring the the second one up and again that's the second one we want to take this bolt out as well. That's it, slackened off. Again, keep a hold of that bolt, don't drop it inside. That's the second one off. So again, we want to rotate the crank again, back up to this top position. And again, at this point we could lock everything back up again. Put the the crankshaft locking tool back in. That's it. Felt it going in. That's it. That's the crankshaft locked again in the correct position. And again, we could put the locking tool on. And that is still perfect. And now we just want to slacken this bolt. We don't actually want to take it off at the moment. So just want to have it slacken it off. 
Okay, all going well so far. So the next job is to remove the cam chain tensioner. The first bit is to the centre nut there, is to slacken, the, take the spring tension off. Just slacken this off. And then take the two Allen screws out. There's one screw out. And the second screw out. And that brings the cam tensioner out as well. So now basically what we want to do with this is to reset this tensioner and to do that we have to take the screw right out and take the spring out and to reset the tensioner there's a wee ratchet in there you can see because it's, it works in a ratchet it can only once it starts to press in against the, the chain it won't go back in. So it's on a wee tiny ratchet and that's how the tensioner works. The spring keeps the right tension on the chain. If there's any wear in the chain, it's obviously going to get slacker so that and it'll push it in a wee bit more and it'll take up any slack in the chain. But we need to have that set right back in, like so, so that we can refit the, the ten cam chain tensioner. There is a gasket there. It's not in bad condition, but I've actually got a new one, so I'll put the new one on. So now, we want to take the last bolt out from the... Again, make sure you do not drop it inside. That'll be a disaster. Keep a hold of the bolt at all times, that's it. So that's the third bolt out. So now, the this cock is free to come off the cam. So basically I'm going to put a cable tie through there and I'm going to cable tie it over the top of the frame because I don't want it, that disappearing down that hole either. <laughs> so that's just basically there to, to keep it just hanging there, that's fine. So we can, at the moment we can remove the special tool. We can slacken off the four bolts on the top there that hold the cam and cover in place. So one, do them diagonally. Two. Three, four. So that's all those four bolts slackened off. So we can remove those four bolts. Four. There's really nothing holding the the rocker box on so that should be able to lift off hopefully <laughs> he says now she's coming off that's it's free now I'm going to be very careful here that's it that's that off so now really there's nothing holding the camshaft in place. But there's one thing to look out for. Just in below this section here, there is a, a locating half ring, which keeps the camshaft in its correct position. Uh, and we don't want to lose that at all. So as we lift the camshaft out, that's it free. Um, yeah, that's still sitting there. It's in position, that's good. So that's the camshaft out. There's two dowels 
that sits on and there's a wee half ring it just sits it's a tiny wee thing that's it there it's half and that sits in that groove in here and that has to stay in because that stops any sideways move movement of the camshaft this makes just make sure there's some oil in those oil ways and there's plenty of oil kind of kicking about up here so that's fine so now <laughs> The moment of truth. So here is the new camshaft. It's a beautiful bit of engineering. It's made by Kent Cams, and Kent Cams have been in production for many, many years. Uh, they've been making performance cams for cars and all sorts for a long, long, long time. But while as it's out, I just wanted to point out the wee hole in the top because on there's three lobes on the cam here. And the top one is where this locating pin sits in when you're doing the, the, the setting of the cam. So when the, all the tools are in and this, is, but this pin is locked into that position, that means the cam timing is, is spot on. So we'll slip the cam in. And that wee ring's still in place, that's good. That's it, it's in, feels good. Again, give it a good dab of oil all over. It's plenty of oil in the top end here to, to use. Oil in the lobes, and oil in the journals. So now it's a case of putting the, the cam box back on. Excellent. And we can put these four bolts back in. It's a bit daunting when you're doing <laughs> work like this on your engine. <laughs> But it certainly helps having the, the correct special tools. I mean, you could potentially do this without them, but it's this way, it seems a bit over, overkill in many ways. Uh, but at least you know it's done properly and you know the valve timing will be absolutely spot on and that is crucial. That's them pretty well. That's that. That's that. Seated, seated right down. So we'll just torque these down and torque them up on opposite sides. And it's these four bolts, bolts, bolts are all torqued to 10 newton meters. and it's free to revolve, that's really good. Uh, it's perfect, it just feels so, so nice. So now we want to get the cam back in the correct position. So we'll put the special tool back on again. Bring the cam up to the top and locate that, the pin in. So that is it, that's the, the cam located in its correct position. The crankshaft uh, locking pin is still in, so the crankshaft and the cam are both in the correct uh, alignment with each other. So now we want to basically lift the sprocket back onto the, the cam. That's it. And we'll put one nut in to hold that in place again. Make sure you do not drop this, these bolts. Okay, that's in. 
do away with the cable ties, don't need that anymore. The sprocket seated properly on the, on the cam. Now, we're going to tighten this one up, but what we have to do is get it in the right place. When the chain tensioner goes in from the back, so it puts the tension on this side of the chain and pushes it in. So this side of the chain should always be taut and, and have no slack in it. So by moving this anti-clockwise, we can take up all the slack and keep all the slack to the back end, which will be taken up by the, the chain tensioner. So basically, we keep that as tight as we can and then just tighten this bolt up. Oops, wrong way. So just nip it up just enough just now. Okay, so before we go any further, this is at this stage, this is where we refit the cam chain tensioner. And you can't really go wrong with it because on it, there's a wee bit symbol that says, it says up and the wee spring-loaded section should be to the top. I've got a new gasket that I'll put on and we'll put that in. So it's up, so that's up and that's back in. And we'll put the two bolts in that hold that in place. Get through the gasket, that's it. torque these bolts up as well. Again, they're, again, they're torqued to 10 newton meters. So now we've got to put the actual spring in and that we should then, because there's some slack in the chain at the moment, once this goes in it should pop the tensioner so it should take out the slack that's in there, because you can feel it in the, the moment this chain's wobbling about the slack. Once this goes in and sets the tensioner, you heard it going, so you heard it actually going in. Cam chain tensioner going back in. Just screw that right in. And now if I put my finger in there, yeah, the tension, all the slack's gone in the chain. So the cam chain tensioner has taken that slack up and again just give that a wee torque up again it's 10 newton meters as well that's it so now we want to remove the cam setting tool and the crankshaft holding tool they're both out and we want to continue turning the crankshaft anti-clockwise Basically, so we can get the next two bolts in as well. So that's up to that one. Again, do not drop it. Do not drop it, Ian. Do not drop it. I don't want you to have to do a complete engine rebuild. <laughs> in. And rotate it a bit more to get the third one. There's the third one up. Again, we want to torque these up to 10 Newton meters. That's one. Two. We'll put the crank locking tool back in just to make sure everything is absolutely spot on. That's it locked in. We'll put the, this testing tool back on and that locks in absolutely perfectly. So, 
That is basically the cam in, installed. The crankshaft is in exactly the right position, it's locked. The camshaft is locked in the correct position. The, yeah. All, and the cam chain tensioners all back in. So basically that's this job done. So there's only one job left to do. And that's to check the tappet clearance. The exhaust should be 0 0.018. And the inlet should be 0 0.018. Even they're, they're torqued to 10 newton meters as well. So that's 10 newton meters. So that's the new cam installed. The tappets are done, all the bolts are torqued down, the cam chain adjuster, that's all being reset. Yeah, it's all looking good, all looking good. So, as you can see from this side as well, you can see what it's like in there. And the crankshaft locking tool, it actually goes in right down here at the bottom here. And that's where that goes in and locks the crankshaft through that hole. It might seem overkill um, having all these tools and many people could find top dead center potentially through there. But uh, nah, it's the, the reassurance of knowing it, it is spot on is quite something. Anyway, I'm going to pretty much fin end the video here and then I'm going to continue basically putting the bike back together because that's what I basically had to remove to get into that, I had to unbolt the brake lever, and that's kind of tucked away at the side there, that just bolts on down there, and take the, I took the exhaust off as well. Um, I'm not going to bother showing you that, because I firmly believe, if you're not competent to do a job like this, I don't think, or even competent to take the casings off, you shouldn't be going in and replacing the cams, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I'm, I deliberately didn't video taking the bike apart. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, I, hope the, I hope the video quality comes out well and you can see quite clearly each step of the process involved in fitting the cam. Uh, so this is only part one of my wee tune-up series. But another one comes out next week which should finalise where I want to be with this bike. So for now, ride safe. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.